Thousands of protesters took to the streets of Oxford to express their opposition to the WEF's 15-minute city agenda. Under the scheme, drivers will have to obtain government passes to travel through certain areas, and if they exceed their ration limit, networks of license plate scanning surveillance cameras will zap them with fines. The council calls it traffic calming. But it looks an awful lot like a de facto climate lockdown and population control. <laughs> During the march in Oxford, leftists, including some masked members of Antifa, staged a counter-protest during which they called the other protesters fascists. Apparently, opposing a state-backed scheme designed to restrict the movement of individuals, fighting against a government agenda to impose a new onerous level of taxation on ordinary working-class people, that now makes you a fascist. <laughs> no, your eyes aren't deceiving you. The left is now protesting in favour of a new tax on the poor. <laughs> oh, how times have changed. <laughs> One of these dangerous... Fascists opposing 15 minute cities gave a speech. She was a 12 year old mixed race girl. I could stand here and say more or less what other people are going to say about the effect of these 15 minute neighborhoods, soon to become digital ID facial recognition zones. Let's say my friend lives in zone 3 and I'm in zone 1. If, for example, I went to my friend's house in zone 3, my parents normally come and pick me up in, it, in their car. It only takes 10 minutes. So does that mean that they would have to go round the ring road and back into town again? If my mum or dad had to drive round the ring road, it would take 30 minutes, causing much more pollution and leaving a much bigger carbon footprint. Quick, call the ADL, the Fourth Reich is upon us. They will say, you can walk home. Would that be safe for me to walk home? Me as a 12 year old walking home in the dark alone. Is that really going to be safe? Then they will say, oh, don't worry about that. We've already thought of that. You'll be safe. We will have a thousand cameras on the streets following you and tracking you all the way home. Oh, and just remember, it's for your safety. Here's another fascist. It essentially is restricting people's right to move. You have to pay the government in order to get round the block. And it's going to kill small businesses, it's going to kill tourism, it's going to be crazy. There's more to this story, but first a word from the sponsor of today's video. One of the things that prevents people reaching their full, true potential is the bad habits that consume so many of us. Which brings me to today's video sponsor, Fume. They're on a mission to help humanity escape from the vices that continually drag us back. Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. A natural diffusive device that uses cores infused with delicious plant flavors in combination with behavioral science. To make switching your bad habit to a positive one not only easy, but fun. Fume's new version 2 model is snappy and tactile. With an adjustable airflow dial and a magnetic end cap, your fingers will always have something to do. Mmm. Smooth. Now, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really expect much of this, but it's been a big surprise. Favourite flavour's got to be white cranberry. It's really relaxing, gives you that little peace of mind in the middle of a busy day. So check out the thousands of five-star reviews from people just like you who've successfully switched when other solutions didn't work. The easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one and Fume is designed perfectly to achieve just that. Head to tryfume.com slash pjw or scan the QR code and use code pjw to get 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. The Journey Pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version two Fume to help kickstart your positive habits. That's tryfum.com and use code PJW to get an additional 10% off on your order today. Now back to the video. Under the Oxford plan, residents would only be able to drive through the controlled area a hundred times a year. That's twice a week. Yeah, tough luck if you're driving to work five times a week. You'll either have to pay the fine every day or add miles and miles onto your journey. Again, driving many miles further in order to reduce carbon emissions. Lest we forget, this scheme isn't just restricted to Oxford. They're rolling it out across the country. In London, Sadiq Khan is expanding the ULES zone to every borough of London. That means people with older cars will be forced to pay a tax of £12.50 a day every day simply to get around. One million people outside London will also be impacted. Who drives older cars? The poor. It's a tax on the poor 
and the left is marching in favour of it. Fascism! The Telegraph reports the Tory council, yes, the Tories, so Antifa is literally marching in support of a Tory policy, wants to slice up the city of Canterbury into five different regional zones. Residents and tourists would face as yet undisclosed fines for travelling across boundaries via ANPR cameras, unless they venture out onto a new ring road which will make some one mile trips ten miles long. Oh, but it's not a lockdown, no. There are no physical barriers, just surveillance boundaries that fine you if you violate them. They're not banning private vehicles from areas of the city, while admitting they're banning private vehicles from areas of the city. There were no physical borders preventing people from travelling during lockdown. Yeah, that didn't stop the government from handing out onerous fines if people travelled during lockdown, did it? Councillor Dave Wilson, a Labour councillor in the city, said, quote, one of the things we've said is, what is the objective of all this? Are we trying to cut pollution or congestion or just force everybody out of their cars? The Canterbury plan is scheduled to be in place by 2045. Again, to reduce pollution by making people travel further and emitting more pollution. But wait, that's 2045. 15 years after they say the sale of all diesel and petrol cars will have been banned anyway. So how does that make any sense? It doesn't, until you realise it has nothing to do with the environment and everything to do with population control. The 15-minute city was the brainchild of Colombian-born Parisian professor Carlos Moreno, who just happens to have been a member of the militant revolutionary socialist M19 guerrilla movement. Interesting coincidence. And WEF promo material for these 15-minute cities makes them look like high-rise prisons. So when I'm looking at this, it's a grid infrastructure. Yeah, so basically the way it works is it's 170 kilometers long, 200 meters wide, 500 meters high. Wow. Really makes you think. Get early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and personally DM me. You've seen how much I get demonetized all the time. Well, this is how you support me by subscribing at pauljosephwatson.locals.com. Please click the link in the description.